love you guys so much. I'm sure it's ancient, um, that level of care that I have for both of you. And frankly, respect. Because for me, doing what they do, and also being married in business, um, and ex you know, being in this very metaphysical world, I think it's so important to journey together. I know that that's now a value for me going forward. It's very important. So I just want to say, Debbie Dashinger, Dare to Dream, if you're loving this, please subscribe, leave a review. I read all the reviews, and I'm grateful, grateful. We are number 200 in self-improvement in all of Apple Podcasts and uh, ranking very high in many countries, and recently were nominated for two People's Choice Podcast Awards, as well as the Webby Awards. So, um, wow. You know, it's, it's my year, I, I feel that. I've been doing this almost 13 years, it'll be 13 years this June, and I just had this uh, feeling like, I'm ready. When I first started doing this and I was alone, out in this path where nobody was doing really podcasting or anything, I just got this inspiration, like, I've been doing this so long, I'm ready for some acknowledgement. Nice. And the universe has been going, okay. Nice. <laughs> it's time. Look it's how powerful time. you are. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Let's talk about that. Because I'm really here with zero agenda, so I'm channeling you, you, and everything yeah. I just heard. Yeah. Perfect place to start. Yeah. Manifestation. Right. Okay. Because this is supposed to be the year of creating dreams, which dare to dream couldn't be more fabulous. I really want to talk about big ass dreams. Big, big ass. ass. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. we're not playing around. And everybody, the conversation is always about, you know, playing small mm -hmm. or up leveling or stepping it up. Those words have become so pedestrian. Why? Yeah, why minimalize yourself? Because we've been taught yeah. that we're not, that we're not worthy. That we're not ent entitlement is a challenging word, but I'm going to use it loosely here. I'm not worthy, so I'm not entitled to that. You've been taught that that's selfish and that selfishness is bad. You are taught that from the separation perception. Otherwise, you are the all. You create the all. There's enough for the all, right? It is an all force. It's an all force which is that I can have it all. What would all be like to you? We've asked people that. What would all be like to you? And they're like... I, I don't And you're know. like, wow! And that's why that's you're why. challenged yeah. to have that abundance, right? Manifestation is something that everybody is doing 24-7 for themselves. We first want to say that because when it first came out that they were, you were going to be taught how to manifest, it was kind of like you were going to be taught how to be breathing while you're sitting there breathing with someone saying, could you show me how to breathe? And it's like, well, you're already doing that. What we could show you is how to be aware of your manifestation, which will then put you more in the driver's seat position of creating through awareness yes. your experience. Let's do that. Let's give a few steps. So for a big year, big dreams, like you know, if, you, if you're ready to play, and I'm going to throw one of my dreams in the soup so I can take it through as you do this. Actually, the divine gave me this dream. It was not, as far as I know, my dream per se, but uh, last October I had a download that I was a shaman, a priestess, a healer. Mm -hmm. And I went, uh -huh, what does somebody do with information like that? So I've been looking into shaman schools. I've been working with very gifted friends who've been, thank you, uh, activating me and doing some past life, very profound work. So that, but it still feels very big, like going out of country, leaving my life for a while, ta-da. So, um, well, Master, the truth is, is that you can be you in any space that you create for yourself. It is not isolated to particular locations on the Earth ship. The Earth ship is a matrix gridding system that gives you the opportunity to create a powerful vortex for you to get into an assimilated aspect of frequency to align yourself with memory and activations. It is only the forgetfulness of your own in power that you seek it from someone else. Having said that, we support practitioners who assist others to find that magic from within themselves. We do not support masters that find their students in need of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you get to really play and choose. Do I choose to go somewhere else? Well, no, I kind of don't because I really love my life here and I want to make this inclusion. I don't want it to be compartmentalized. 
I am God, therefore I pretty probably much could have anything I choose, right? And when doing that, in doing that, that becomes my message this time around. Though in your priestesshood, Master, you were the deliverer of majestic things to others, of miracles perceived by those that had no idea of what they could do or who they were. What was challenged in that experience for you was the action of worship, and that's a dangerous position, because that lays too much responsibility for you, and you retracted yourself from that position. It was too painful. People actually started sacrificing things for you and people, and you said, no, no, this is not. So the pain of the result of who you were bound you in amnesia of that state of being, and you kind of washed that away. The goddess in you thrives in this energy because the authentic energy of that is empowering others, which is what you do now. Okay, But because of what you experienced at what you perceive to be the extreme level of it, this time you leveled yourself down in it. That means that other components of your life would level down as well. Oh boy. So, the, so the threads are all connected. They always One are. One doesn't go down and doesn't tip. It's like, it's like an anchor that brings it all down. Is, yeah. That's cool yeah. because that means anytime you work on your capacity of energy, you know that every aspect of your life will benefit. Mm -hmm. you know, that, I love this. Yeah, that, that's the way it works. You're just, you know, if you're, if you're lacking in something, you're lacking in everything. You're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to um, heal that lack, so to speak, mm -hmm. right, so that we want everything to rise, it feels mm -hmm. like helium to me, mm -hmm. um, with a lot of ease. So there is a, a, an old wound, there's some amnesia around the wound, so I, you know, to keep safe and protected. Mm -hmm. um, I feel very moved by what you shared, thank you. So what is the way to supersede that in order to free oneself to fully become? Good question. And of course, that's individual for all of you. We honor all of your processes if you feel that they are working with you, for you. And we bless you on your journey for continued healing. We find that the most effective way is to create an experience authentic in the knowing perception of the now. And know that all possibility lives in the now. The time, mm, and be gentle with this word here, wasted on tracking and chasing the previous could be better served in creating fresh from the now. Could you explain that? That comes from you knowing that you are so powerful that this perception creates your reality. It doesn't matter what happened in the past. That was my perception then. This is my perception now. And if my perception is expanded and fully in love, there will be no limitation this time in the experience of it. There was only limitation in it before because there was fear wrapped around it, and I don't hold that position anymore. So we teach you how to hold your new position in love, and you don't literally don't even have to give a second thought as to whether something's going to turn out crappy again. It's not in the frequency. Are you talking about love? Oh. Love is a frequency, is a state of being. It is a baseline or a foundation for everything that you manifest. So is fear. So is fear. Fear will create a limited experience. Mm -hmm. Love will create an unlimited possibility. Okay, right? so is what is what you are doing based out of love or fear. And this is becoming aware of what is going on in your life because those are the only two things that affect everything. 
and, and everything branches off. Now we already hear your next question, which is, well, how do you decipher between the two accurately, acutely, and with um, extreme refinement? And we say, it takes practice. This is what awareness is. This is what raising your consciousness is. This is what conscious alignment is, and the conscious awakening that is occurring. But in simplified statement, we will reiterate what we just spoke of. If you are conjuring a thought, and projecting a possibility for an experience that you desire, you would ask yourself, am I consumed with the thought of the limitations that could unfold from it, right. or am I inspired with the possibility of the unlimited potential of it? And whichever one wow. you are launching from is exactly how it will play itself out. If you have ever lost your money, it's because you were afraid you might. If you've never lost your money, it's because you've never even given that a thought and you've always known you have it. Mm -hmm. And that's just a tiny fragment. Think about everything in your life. If you have anything limited in your life, it's because you know you do. And you were more than likely afraid you might have it. And who will be careful of those mites? They're mighty. <laughs> oh, that was good. Yeah. Powerful. No, thank you. I, I resonate very much because the thought process has been, oh, if I leave the country, I'm gone for a month. I've already done the money crunching. It's going to necessitate at least 20 grand uh, to do the school, the so, so you say, my intention is to receive a form of a teaching that's going to assist me in my memory. I am opening myself up to know it's going to show up. Mm -hmm. That will not be a full disruption in my life that would cause me to be in fear. I need to be in a space of love and security, so come come towards me. Mm. In this day and age, look at the virtual possibilities. The possibilities are there. You just get to figure out which one resonates with right. you. Then, it might be fun to go. It might be fun to host one somewhere. That's where you're going. Mm. You are so extraordinary and powerful at showcasing magnificence. It's what you do. And you do it partially for yourself, but not near enough. It is not selfish, Master, for you to love yourself and display it with confidence, not arrogance, confidence. That assists you in uplifting everybody else. There's no sacrifice that's called upon. There's no limitation that you must have. It is a position of perspective and knowing. That is creative, unlimited, joyous manifestation. I would like people to know, how can they work with you? Because since I met you, I mean, it's amazing the journey you've been on and what you're doing right now. So share some of that. Share what your practice looks like, um, what you're offering, your network, and all the ways they can get involved with you. Uh, we have an international bestseller. We do. <laughs> Thanks to Debbie, we have an international bestseller. Mm -hmm. We own our own retreat facility in southern Utah. Southern It's beautiful. Utah. Uh, right in the middle of the national parks, and that creates its own little energy and its own little vortexes. We own a network, uh, expansion network. In fact, that's our little bit. It's television Here, network. I can turn around. <laughs> expansion network. How's that? Um, what, tell me about the expansion network. What can people, where do they go for it? What do thanks. they find there? Yeah, so what we did basically, Julius of course offers through, through Julius and virtually and in person, we offer courses and classes from Julius to assist you on your conscious journey which engages your empowerment, uh, private reading sessions, workshops, and retreats. That led to um, our beautiful relationship with you as you continue to assist us to get Julius's word out. And we desired to be on a television network like most practitioners dream of having. You know that, we talked to you about that. How do we do this, how do we do this, how do we get on here, or how do we get on there? And it just didn't seem to be flowing. And Julius <laughs> said to us, do your own thing. 
And we were like, what? What? Your when? Own. I don't even know how to turn the camera on on my cell phone, you know. And Julia said, well, remember that professionals built the Titanic and an amateur built the Ark. I love that. That is the most can-do attitude imaginable. Yeah. Beautiful. So you built your arc. You built a TV network. And they came. They did. Two and by two. Yeah. Because you have a lot of hosts. Yep. And they're coming. And they're coming. There's yeah. more. And by the way, we're at the Conscious Life Expo, and I just think it's so hilarious because I know just over the years, I know so, and the years of doing my show, so many people coming up to me. And periodically, somebody would come up, and I'd go, oh, what are you doing? And they're like... I'm on Brad and Casey's network now, my own show. It's like, well, I know them. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that's beautiful. Where is it? Expansionnetwork.com? Yeah. Or what yes. you can find it there. The, the key component is to spell it correctly. It is spelled X-P-N-S-I-O-N network.com. You can check out programming that way. But it platforms on Roku Television and Amazon TV. So if you have a smart TV, okay. you can just scroll through your apps, search it, and Spell load it. it on your yeah. TV and watch it. It loads like Netflix, so it's a library component. Yes. So it doesn't run in a in a timeline limitation. Mm -hmm. So you can just library all the programs on it, and it's growing and growing and growing. Uh, we'll be on we all just, the devices worldwide yeah, shortly with our app. We just launched our Spanish-speaking division mm -hmm. at Conscious Live mm -hmm. this year. Just launched it, and our app will be in place within six months and then we'll be on every device all around the world. Take it over the universe. And so uh, the name of your international best-selling book is? Who You Are Being. Who You Are Being. And that's basically channeled. The, yes. The book. yes. Yes. It's deep. Yeah. I, I just want to say as an aside, I edited the book and I was in a trance. The, it was the best editing job ever. It felt like a <laughs> gift because I was in a trance reading the words and the wisdom. Right? Yeah. How does it get any better than that? That's a great manifestation. What is some, we are really, as far as I'm concerned, I know people say, don't you think it's a beautiful time? <laughs> don't you think all the craziness is, is actually is the underbelly of what is the good to come? Awesome. But what I also see out there quite a bit is a lot of uncertainty, yeah. a oh, lot of, no uh, there is no ground that is actually solid to stand on. So shift, shift, change, change. And it's really kicking up things for people who are like, can I please have an anchor somewhere? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it, without right. a doubt. Now, right. now here's the ironic part to that. Okay? If, if you want to look at it from a very logical explanation, how many years, if you think back, how many years have human beings been asking for change? Can you think of? That's so funny. You forgot to say what kind of change. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. Change those thoughts, please. Yeah. yeah. Change the change. No yeah. specifics. Yeah. You are correct. The foundation, it, it seems to, we don't like to use the word rocky or unstable. We would say shifting. It's shifting. Opportunity. Which is a massive opportunity. But you're right. The, what you may or may not have been um, warned of is that everything's going to crumble apart and then be rebuilt. And that that's a lot of how change works in our lives anyway, in small portions, but this is like the, you know, 16.0, you know, earthquake, okay? And what we tell everybody is when those things are occurring, you want to grab a little hold of your friends, okay? Grab a little hold of your friends. Here, here. You want to engage in a great cup of tea and talk about the things and not hold back anymore. This is an opportunity for intimacy. This is an opportunity for un unconditional love and connection and the enthusiasm and encouragement of each other, the dreams, the daring to dream your dreams together and talking about them. And then it's you're going to find your stable force in unity, no longer in separation. So most of our lives as humans have been led to a large margin in separateness or survival instincts. This is the unified process, part of the unified process. A little bit of patience, a lot of love, getting rid of a lot of fear, and the best time ever to be on a conscious journey. Mm. So what Julius explains if we may say so, to put into a, a little bit more of a scientific mind for Rob 
of this, what this wave is, what's the wave of this thing. So Joyce explains that there are dimensions, dimensional space, and realms are a, a dimension governed, a realm is a, is a plateau opportunity for an energy frequency in a dimension to be experienced. In between dimensions are astral planes. Astral planes hold thought possibility, basically ingredients that the dimension draws from to demonstrate those ingredients in an aspect of itself. Commonly, there's a quantum energy ribbon of field thought that runs through an astral plane, but right now there are three. There's three of them. That means that you have the opportunity for more thoughts, bigger thoughts. Massive. Massive expansiveness. Expansion. You literally have, wow. it's, you've gone from Walmart to super Walmart in your choices and opportunities. And these waves are holding steady for what we understand to be at least a projected two and a half years for you. The great news is, is that even at that point, they're just gonna release one. You're still gonna have a couple of ribbons in there, which is still, still double than what. what you have now. And this is gonna last for about another 10 to 12 years. What could you do at that time? Now you, now you think about that. Right. You've been asking for it. Yeah. We've all been asking. And it's been here before. This has commonly been referred to as the Golden Age, the Bronze Era, the Dark yeah. Era. And this has to do with whether there's one, two, or three ribbons running in your astral plane. Now, some people are like, what, did, what was that all about? And we say it's just an energy force for your manifestation. Totally. That's what that is. I love this. I love this. I love this. And thank you for the visual. So it's, I mean, you say rod, I hear lightning rod, right? right? Yeah. So the thought goes as for lightning rod yes. creation, which doesn't mean that all your thoughts create, you're safe that way. But what I, what, do, uh, what can we do to step it up? Can you give us like three steps, five steps? Yes. You know, I'm sorry to make it so nope. entrepreneur 101, yep. Yep. but you know, for you and for Julius, what can we really do to access that to us, our highest potential, so we can be what we came here to be, which of course ultimately has to mean the service we came here to give. Right. Consistently, most of you want your life here on this planet in your reality to improve. Yeah. A percentage of you are fine with just raising your consciousness and having more astral plane projection, but the average ones are gonna be like, okay, tangibly I want this applicable in my life. So one of the things that is vital right now are grounding techniques every single day. How many of you go Could through you Can I ask you a, a question about, yeah. excuse me, about grounding? Yeah. Yes. I just watched a video about earthing. Um, perfect, Basically, right? that's the same thing. Perfect. And you can look this up on YouTube, folks, but essentially, yes. I'll make it so simple, and please feel free to deep dive, that's right, that you take these suckers off, which yeah. are the very things mm -hmm. that separated us from the mother. Yeah. Put your feet into the grass, into and the if you're in Los Angeles like me, even if it's dog pee pee, <laughs> yeah. but just go ahead and be in the earth, be in the ground, go to nature, reconnect, and pull up the energy, and of course give back. Good yeah, one. and we used to always do it when we were tribal. Mm -hmm. That means, that means that we are grabbing from thought, field and applying it to this realm that we are experiencing. Without it, it's floating around and you're unstable. It's like the gas pump throwing gas all over your car and you're wondering why your car isn't moving. Oh, wait, ground it. Now I'm fueled. Mm. And I can drive the car and experience. Now, right? now, now I'm going to expand a little bit more on that. Yeah. We're in California. Mm -hmm. You've got a Water. beautiful mm, the coastline. Water. Do you know how yeah. much energy is in that water? water? Do you know that water is a conduit, an amplifier of energy? And all you have to do is take your two little feet out and go stand in that lovely ocean. Yeah, and of course you can simulate this in any formation of water. This you know, is there's float to, 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 uh, you can toads stand out in there the shower. Now. Yeah, Epsom salt, salt water, I types of salt day. water. Yeah, yeah. 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 it's great. So grounding, water saturation. 
while you're in the water saturation, do your meditation. Yes, that's Open when you Open your mind, get your inspirations, yeah. and then immediately transcribe and journal. Don't wait. You'll lose 80% of your inspiration if you wait two hours. Okay. Because That's you're so magic chaotic. cycle. You're yeah. in the magic cycle. And do this, we tell everybody, we do to do this on a regular basis. But let's just say to do it for two weeks. Just throw it in for two weeks. Just try it. And just see that you're going to feel a little safer, a little more focused, a little stronger in what you're doing. Those are those are simple, useful for anybody, no matter where you're at in your life. They're profound, and no matter where you are on your conscious journey, no matter what teachings you are following, and we bless you on that, to include this is to create the reality on this earth that you're looking for. It will always be created for you all out here because that's ultimately where you are and where you are going. But we think everybody wants this life here to be magnificent. Let's put it right here, right? How do you guys do it? I mean, for me, as long as I've known you, the love between you is palpable. Thank you. And it's so beautiful to see and experience, and I aspire to have something like that. And I'm sure people who are watching this can feel you. Um, it's just the simpatico, the synergy, the connection, Thanks. the adoration. What is that like for you? Brad, I want to start with you as a man. Well, it might get me crying. I would love you to cry. Uh, <laughs> I'd love to be Barbara Walters wait, right wait, now. But well, I you really, got enough time for that. I want to know time. really, as a man, how is it for you to show up like this and to be in this at the level you are? I wake up every day knowing that I want to change, no matter what it is. In fact, Julius made a comment to me one day. You want to change? Okay, think about this one. What if that person or thing that you're searching for is you? and you're the change. How powerful is that? That means I'm unlimited. And I'm unstoppable. And it will continue on. And when I'm done, I'm done. Oh, actually you'll never be done. And, and I'm not. <laughs> and I'm not and done. Yeah. And I'm not done. <laughs> And, and how, um, talk Does that about, explain? That? It, it, it explains who you are, and it also explains your journey the past couple of years, because mm -hmm. this is exactly what I see in you, and in what your life is unfold, continuing to unfold to be. And as far as you and your beloved, mm -hmm. just speak to this one a little. <laughs> <laughs> done this many, many times. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And It's like being in um, the middle of yourself. Of something. It's, it's not, you're, ha you're not looking for it anymore. Um, you're not worried about it anymore. Um, it's We've a, always got each other's back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There are no, no, no questions, no regrets, no what ifs. We got it. You're in it. Yeah. You're in it. Uh, you're like perennial Valentine. Yeah. Well, and you have to have a great sense of humor. We have to be able to kid with each other. We have to be able to support each other, and um, and allow each other, which is not a dangerous thing, because we know that um, in, that th this is joyous. This is joyous. And we find joy in, in a great many people, especially our, our students, but this is home base for us. And I haven't always had that. I've been married. Brad is my fourth husband. I tell everybody I would have married everybody on the planet to get to Brad. <laughs> Almost did. <laughs> and, uh, but I finally found a relationship that was not based on fear, but based on love. So I did not come to Brad because I needed him. 
I came to Brad because I chose him. And it was a pretty big choice with the messed up brain injury and stuff, which actually helped reinforce that and made me realize that I was choosing him. I didn't need this problem. Why would I do that? And so um, that totally shifted everything for me. I tell everybody, though, if I, when I got hit with the tsunami of Brad, <laughs> it made everything, makes everything in your life worth that journey, right? Hi friends, uh, this is Rob Rowe at the Conscious Life Expo 2020. I'm working with the, uh, the lovely and fabulous Debbie Dashinger of the Dare to Dream podcast and also my own podcast, which is Shape Shifting Reality. Uh, we're on YouTube, Spreaker, Anchor FM, just about anywhere you can find podcasts. And uh, I have the great privilege to be here with uh, Brad and Casey Wallace. Welcome. Wow, thank you so much, Rob. It is, it's of course, an extreme pleasure any time you were working with Debbie and you, and it's really, really great and privilege when we get to sit in the seat of interviewing, right? Isn't that fun? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It makes me feel like I'm important in some way. Now, I, I know you guys have known Deb a long time, which is great. Uh, a lot of my listeners might be new to what you guys are doing, so uh, could you provide maybe just a brief overview of, of how you got started with uh, channeling Julius? I, oh, yeah, you want us to go ahead and start the story? You want, you want me to get Jump started? Jump in, and, uh, Yeah. In 2007, I was involved in a car accident and uh, through a series of events, ended up overdosing on medication that was supposed to be helping me because I had suffered a massive brain injury. Very common. And uh, yes, it's very common, believe it or not. And uh, ended up leaving the human plane of existence for eight hours. Near death experience and had the great and unique opportunity of not only watching what was going on here, but also realizing that I was out of my body and on the other side, and got to meet with a group of beings who we've come to know as Julius. And I I say I negotiated with them to come back with me, but they had already worked that out <laughs> with my wife. But they wanted to make him feel empowered. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> That's a good one. And uh, when I came back, woke up at the hospital in the room, she then started channeling them back to me. And so this is what we do now. Well, that's incredibly interesting. Is is you know, channeling has been around for quite a while. A lot of people do it and provide some, you know, very very valuable information. But I personally have never heard of anybody channeling a group. Yeah. So, do you get the sense that some of the individuals involved come through at other times, and may, maybe there might be some trade off if there's certain you know information that some of the entities may know more about than others? I love you, Ron. That is such a great question, and the answer is yes. In fact, we are starting to, and I'll, oh, we're, I'd like to explain the collective theory with you and why and how that is, and then yes, that is so true. Because it's a collective, of course there's some different personality types, and during, depending on who is being spoken to, there can be some adjustments made according to what that person probably could receive personality-wise through conversation. So for instance, when Brad was, is in his recovery from his brain injury, for anybody who's ever had the experience of loving somebody or living with somebody or nurturing somebody who's had a massive brain injury, there's a lot of depression involved, there's a lot of anger involved, blame, um, all kinds of reactiveness. And in the first year that we were together, the Julius group was assisting Brad in healing his brain injury. Well, of course, he'd fly off the handle on something, and this feminine energy would come in and really calm him down, like masterfully choreographed in alignment with what would be accepted. They shift slightly. Interesting. Though Julius is the predominant personality, it is a type of a male energy personality, the theory of, uh, of ascension for most is that 
as we have lowered our vibration and come into physical, we come into the illusionary component that we are individuals, that we're separate from each other. Which is why humans refer to them as I, as ourselves. Me, me and I, me and I, and you and yours, okay? And of course, it, no matter what um, doctrine you may have dabbled into in your life, they mostly all consist that there's one, that we are all one, right? Well, that is a state of consciousness perception. So this group has raised their consciousness into a very high field of knowing existence and perception. And so they refer to themselves as we in honoring that we are all one and that they actually feel that unification, not the separateness of their particles anymore. Oh, that's quite interesting. So, so you know, what uh, you know, raises another point of curiosity with me is, is as the recovery has taken place, you know, obviously, Brad, you don't show any signs of any injury presently. You're, you know, very nice, easygoing guy. When you were transitioned out of the, out of the period uh, that, that Casey's describing into more the, the heel sort of state, what, what was the interaction with the entities then? I can understand the helping you heal part, but then once that healing was taking place, did they say something like, you know, hey, we'd like to stay around and, and help you, uh, you know, share some knowledge with the rest of humanity, or did, or anything like that happen? <laughs> good, good question. Love your questions, Rob. Yeah. Thank you. The, yeah. uh, the agreement comes from a past life that we've actually shared together where I was their teacher, oh. so the roles were reversed. Oh, okay. And I was basically, if you want to term it, the professor of the college students. I was the professor to the students, the collective, the group. And so my accident gave them the opportunity to repay the favor. Really? Yeah. Oh, I've never heard that part of the story. That's and cool. so... Yeah, what's really interesting is in, in that life, he died of a brain injury. Okay. So, um, I, I love to pick up here because he kind of gets humbled by this. <laughs> in, uh, imagine that you have a spiritual teacher in your world, and perhaps you do if you're watching this type of a program. and. Um, the authentic goal of a spiritual teacher is to assist you into mastery, okay? Sure. Now, for many people, mastery could just be a base level of being able to manifest whatever they want, and that's perfectly what they're looking for in their life, and that brings them joy, and they're good to go. And others are looking for the ultimate mastery of consciousness, where your vibration and your knowing will eventually allow you to ascend yourself off of the realm. Hundreds of thousands of people have done it. Most people here on the Earthship refer to that as a hyper-consciousness state or a Christ type of consciousness state. We support that Christ was not a singular being, but it is a state of consciousness, okay? okay? And if that occurs, a lot of cool things happen. You don't go through amnesia anymore in your next experiences, whatever you can yeah. imagine that's like. So um, in the case of their previous experience, Joel, uh, Joel, so, <laughs> sorry, hold, holding off Julius here. Hold on, just a second, I'm trying to get through my dialogue. Okay, Brad is teaching them on a very high consciousness state that allowed them to achieve a high state of consciousness and send off. And, and he basically got left behind. He got a brain injury in that life, forgot everything about who he was, and died on the battlefield, okay? Now, what time period was this? You know? This was approximately the 1500s in their last physical life together. Yeah. Okay, so Europe uh, crusades, yeah. battles. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and um, so oddly enough, as the universe would have it, a repetitive cycle of amnesia through a brain injury, and they're like, you know what, we're going to come help you out. And that, so I tell people the agreement ultimately lies between Julius and Brad. And he's really just sharing generously, Julius, with everybody else, in, in because he feels that the message well, is the message, more viable for everybody. You know, if they can, uh, if they can do help me, then this is important to the mass. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. And so, very early on, 
the idea was, okay, if I, if I can get healed, then let's put this in front of everybody and just see how many people we can get healed along the way. You mentioned something just a, a couple of moments ago I'd like to go back to, if you don't mind, because I, I think it's a really important point that a lot of people are very interested in, is this whole thing of amnesia after death in this right. life. And you mentioned that after a certain level of ascension, the amnesia no longer happens. Yes. So a couple things about that. Uh, what, Even if we're not to that ascended state yet, what are some things we can do in this life to reduce or eliminate that amnesia thing, which nobody really wants. Everybody, I think, wants to know all about their past lives and who they are as an immortal uh, spirit and that sort of thing. And, and it's difficult. Sometimes we can get glimpses, we can do certain things that will give us some indications, maybe some vague visions here and there, but it's hard to get real clear about exactly what our identity is as an immortal spiritual being. Until so, it isn't difficult anymore, right? Okay. So, Master, what we will tell you is amnesia is a byproduct of your application of fear. Okay. That is a truth. Fear is, has, has um, reflective opinions and judgments of an occurrence. Okay? So, when you pass out of your physical body and you have fear of doing so, and you have judgments in your life, such as guilt and remorse and regret and wishings had take place and missed opportunities and less than grandeur or joy. You will submit or insert yourself into an amnesiac state so that you do not authentically, consciously, in an aware state, re-arrive with all of that baggage in memory because if you felt guilty last time for not finishing something up now you're really late oh, and so you it's a protective it process. is for yeah. yourself so now let, imagine this okay now let, me, now let me add this to that don't you really find it rather ironic that the name of the fluid that the woman that you're born, reborn in is called amniotic fluid. <laughs> yeah. That is interesting. I never really thought about that. Okay. Yeah. And why is that? You assist the amnesia it, process. Assist the that, amnesia. That, is yeah. the, that is the fluid that activates your amnesia. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So in the amnesic state, Master, you can then basically start clean and fresh without guilt and remorse in active memory. Gosh. So you can then have a do-over. You've got the ultimate position of the now, initially, okay? Now, we all know that you have a subconscious mind, and we can get into all of that. That's a whole other discussion of how all regurgitated occurrences can be activated and embedded. But on theory, generally speaking, most people walking around without memory of their previous lives don't in an aware state, carry guilt from those occurrences. You build up so much that stuff that you judge in this lifetime that you can't get over. Can you imagine 10 and one half million years of lifetimes in a, a, in a, in a memory? Now, having said that, having said that, what binds you in fear and guilt is the judgment of something that either you have done or has been done against you. That, that's the truth. That's what you're angry about, right? That's what didn't get, you're, you're in lack because you do not know that you are the fully empowered being and that your empowerment is not reliant on anything exterior of your own self. So you're in blame and you're in guilt and remorse and you're in victimhood until you're not, which means that you've raised your consciousness above judgment. And as that starts happening, you start getting some of your memories back, okay? If your memories will make your journey more difficult here, you will not remember. When you have advanced in consciousness to where your memories will assist your progression here, because you understand that every experience expands you and therefore you love every experience, no matter how others would perceive it, where you would welcome that state of remembrance, that's when it starts to flood upon you. 
So we are basically telling everybody that if you master the component of judgment, you'll have memory. You will. And until you do, you will not have memory of certain things that your soul knows would continue to imprison you. You're trying to free yourself up. You're kind of giving yourself a break, right? Okay. So there's, so there's like a safety mechanism. That you uh, have instilled. Like, like a safety valve to where it prevents us from having more than we can handle. Mm -hmm. But People are already in the overwhelmed state, aren't they, in their lives? Don't you find that to be true? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, th that actually explains a lot. It's, uh, it seems to me that the ideal state would be to keep the memories that enhance our awareness of who we are as an immortal spiritual being and lose the ones that have to do with you know, judgment and guilt. And a, and but you change your opinion of that each time, Master, because that's a judgment as well. Okay. okay. So you're mastering your deciphering process and you're allowing yourself a clean slate for which to do so. We assure you that humans judge their own <laughs> selves sure. more than you could possibly imagine, okay? That Maybe. you could possibly imagine, yes, especially but... when they love other people in their life, families, right. friends, right. community, and they're engaged in some way. If you, if you asked people how much they judge, just judge. Nobody could really tell you exactly what it is that they judge on any given moment or how much they're actually judging everything that goes on in their life. And so the simple thing is, it, or it sounds simple, but it's not, is to become aware of everything that you're judging. Mm -hmm. And that's a process of consciousness. That's a process of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But you made an interesting statement, which was, I would love for me to have memory of useful information to assist me on my progression of knowing myself as the all. And why is it that I do not have accessibility to those files? And we say, actually, you do. That's inspiration that comes through to you. OK. okay? That means that you are accessing a wisdom that you had previously gained from an experience, basically filed it away in a little file cabinet. And you find yourself in a problematic situation for which you desire a solution. And you focus and ideas start to file themselves in. Those are the wisdom files of your experiences feeding your current state of being to assist you. So you have set terms for yourself. You've left some popcorn along the floor, mm -hmm. you know, for your trail. The challenge is, is that there has not been concise, clear Explo teachings and explanations, explanations of all the crazy stuff that you do. You know, what are my dreams about? What are these people about? What are these flashes about? What are my fondnesses about? They're commonly things that you've loved before, okay? What are my inspirations? You've probably either already done them and they brought you such joy that you really want to continue that, or you saw some aspect of joy from another, didn't get around to it last time, because this is only a moment, and I'm going to do that next time. So I'm going to hold that as a, <laughs> I'd like to do this this time. There is more going on than you could, that this finite mind can process. I'd like to get to some things around that. Yeah, this is some really awesome information. Uh, I think what we're talking about here is more things that an individual can do to progress his own uh, level, which of course elevates the whole, since we're part of this whole you know, web of not only human life, but all life and all consciousness. And everything we do, such as you're talking about, on an individual level, of course, benefits the entire web. But <clears throat> there's some really interesting things that I've encountered lately on some audio books I'd, I'd like to ask you about. Even if you're not familiar with those particular books, I'm sure you're familiar with the theories. One was... Uh, uh, a New World by Whitley Strieber. Uh, yeah. You familiar at all? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> it had to do a lot with his uh, contact with extraterrestrial or extra dimensional. You know, there's the distinction may not be really important since it's kind of both. And uh, there's another book that I, I want to read, which is called The Afterlife Re Revolution. And he references uh, his dear wife of many, many years, who passed away, I think, in 2013, and is still working with him very closely. So mm -hmm. they're still 
very much married, very much working together on these books and projects and on the project of communicating with the e extra dimensional beings or the interdimensional beings. So all of this, I think, ties in to you know, some of the things you're, you're talking about here. So here in the Conscious Life Expo, we've got people who specialize in different aspects of this. We've got people who you know, speak to those who have passed on the other side, and then we have UFO specialists and so on. But uh, Whitley Strieber has, has kind of brought it all together, and it's, I don't really see it as subject separate subjects, it's since not. in a lot of his communications with the extra-dimensional beings, there have been those who have passed on along with them. Sure. So, what do you, through your uh, connection with Julius, have you gotten any information about how these other beings play into our evolution and how might we interact with them to both their benefit, since they want things from us and we want things from them, so we can have a, a mutual accord to help them elevate in the directions they want to go and help us elevate in the directions we want to go? So, Master, you are just wearing a costume. You are all light beings. If you okay. unzipped your costumes, you would all be very familiar with each other. In fact, the highest level of truth, you are all the same light. Any physical existence, any type of an oid existence, like a humanoid type mm -hmm. of existence, provides for you a perspective for which to process thought and know yourself. It's a costume that you wear. An alien, by definition, is just something you're not familiar with or you don't think you're familiar mm -hmm. with. But at the soul level, they are you and you are them. The question is, can you get away from the illusion of the costume and align yourself with the truth of magnificence from every source, every source field? Anything that can feel an emotion has a soul. They are a sentient. Now think about that. Now that can get into a long conversation as to whether you can accept certain even things on this earth ship having souls. But if that resonates with you, it, it does. <laughs> and you encounter another being of another form, Master, generally speaking, you can communicate authentically through a transmission of desire to communicate, curiosity to communicate excitement to communicate and provide extraordinary assistance for each other. Only when you are individualized does, is this a challenge. Only when you are individualized does this become a fear-based thing. Suspicion. What do they want? You already do this on this planet now with the humanoids, right? So we do support, Master, that every being is a light being taking all forms in order to expand themselves. And if you can perceive everything that you're reading from that baseline content, you'll get more out of that reading than you did a moment ago, and you love it more and more and more. And then especially with your mind that is very brilliant and loves the challenge of decipher and loves the opportunity to be an archaeologist, you'll be able to find all the fractalized versions of this writing and perhaps use it to inspire your further information for everyone else, which is actually the intention of what those beings are doing. Okay, excellent. I, I wonder if I could uh, maybe just bring it back to, you know, sort of a personal uh, type of um, request about it, me, as Rob Rowe, since you're here, uh, is, is there anything that you can offer me as far as uh, things from my past that may have uh, influence upon my you know, present mental and emotional state that, that I may be able to improve upon, maybe in ways I haven't discovered yet? Yeah, feel more. Feel more deeply. You have severed your emotions because you have accepted a message deeply embedded upon you that to be vulnerable is to be weak. Vulnerability equals intimacy, which is power of connection. Shift that perspective, Master. A soul is the emotional processor of thought. The more you feel, 
the more you know yourself and the more thought is an opportunity for you. You have an intelligent mind. Take that same expandable force and dig it deep inside of you and express and feel and invite and connect and nurture and love. That's where you'll find joy. Dare to dream and shape shifting reality yet again, and I'm sure more in the future. And if you guys have comments, definitely post them below. If you have a question for Brad and Casey, we'll get them to answer. And um, again, subscribe. And if you leave a review, people who love this conversation can find it as well. Thanks for joining us, number one transformation conversation. And as you learned, be ready to earth, connect with the earth, go to the field where all things are possible. There are three rods for you available right now. And don't make them the small dreams, but be willing, as I am really expanding right now, to go for the biggest of the big. And what's really funny, by the way, is when you go for the biggest of the big and you've created them, you look back and go, oh, that was like this. Now I'm ready for that. <laughs> so it's all perspective. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us.